O'Neill Capital Advisors is focused on blockchain, medical cannabis, REITs, technology companies. The company is currently setting up an office in Singapore and doing a lot of SPACs with Asian investors as well. And with me is Dennis O'Neill, the CEO of O'Neill Capital Advisors. So great to have you back here uh, in the thank U.S. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. For, I, I love being here. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about uh, O'Neill Capital Advisors. What are you sure. doing? Sure. Uh, O'Neill Capital Advisors, my background is over 30 years of investment banking experience. I've started two of the largest regional investment banks in Chicago and then went on to run the SoftBank Investments E2 Capital Office out of Chicago. So I've raised a, a couple of billion dollars in early stage capital. I've taken dozens of companies public. I have um, spoken as an expert and thought leader at 75 conferences globally. So, um, you know, we're focused on basically what we do is, is primarily is capital introductions. We have over 30,000 uh, investors in our network. We also work as a, as a merchant bank. So we have, and all of our investors are institutional or super high net or ultra high net worth individuals. So the idea here is that, uh, you, know, um, you know, being able to help companies to be able to access capital that, uh, you know, relationships that they wouldn't normally be able to access. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned blockchain and medical canvas and technology. I, I mean, is, that's your main focus. So how do you like pick those companies, find those industries? Kind of explain that strategy. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> well, um, I've spoken at uh, many uh, blockchain conferences, technology conferences, and medical cannabis conferences. So we, we you know, we get to see hundreds of deals, um, you know, almost every month. So uh, you know, basically, what we look for is that we look for companies that have uh, uh, a management team with a track record of success. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, they've been able to raise some capital to date, so we can watch exactly how they've deployed that capital. Uh, we look for highly disruptive technologies uh, because uh, we look for large marketplaces or marketplaces that are growing very, very quickly, and then that that they have a disruption, uh, very, very disruptive technology to where that they would be able, if successful, and being able to execute on the business model that they will be you know, very, very valuable as a company. And you mentioned uh, moving your offices to Singapore. So sure. why Singapore? Why Southeast Asia? Oh, well, uh, Singapore, number one, is the gateway to Asia because um, they have a, a great government. They have a great legal system. They have the highest concentration of family offices in the world. So there's, there's significant um, uh, amounts of capital there to be able to access, uh, as well as that for early stage companies, uh, they have uh, grant programs, matching uh, investor matching funds programs. They have a multitude of associations, which will give you support for free, as a as a early stage company. So uh, we believe that that is the platform that we can build from and be able to access the rest of Asia. Mm, yeah, I've heard a lot of great things about business in Singapore. Yeah, no, so. it's booming. Now, tell me about RECEP. Am I saying this right? Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Yeah. Explain what that is. Yeah, it's one of the biggest reasons why that we're actually moving our offices into Singapore. It's the largest free trade zone in the world. Uh, it represents 15 countries everywhere from Singapore, Malaysia, uh, China, Japan, South Korea, Thailand, Vietnam, and many others. It, it, it encompasses about a third of the world's population. Mm. And it eliminates about 90% of the tariffs. So you're able to, you, so what you're able to do is that you're able to trade freely uh, in, you know, throughout this region. And what, one of the most important aspects of this is that you know, these countries, Asia is, is the largest population and the fastest growing economies. And it's probably, it's the most undervalued, especially in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. You can find unbelievable value in these companies because historically they have not been able to access B and C rounds. Interesting. And very young population too, Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So a lot of potential growth and... Yeah, it's ahead. booming for yeah. sure. So what is your overall Asia strategy then? Uh, the idea here for us is that we are, the major problem right now is that you have multi-billion dollar companies that um, have an Asia strategy, if they're from the United States, or if you're an Asian company, you have a US strategy. But once you get below that billion dollar mark, many of these companies do not have an, an, an Asian strategy if you're from the, in the United States. So what we're doing is that we're setting up subsidiaries in, in Singapore to access all the government programs that are available there. 
And then we're able to match them with um, investors as well as that uh, market opportunities for them to be able to grow their business in Asia. And we're doing the same thing for Asian companies, especially Southeast Asian companies, to where that we're, we're introducing them to the U.S. markets as well as that U.S. investors. And we're taking a lot of these uh, Southeast Asian companies now. Uh, we'll be taking them public through SPAC. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dennis. Great to see you again. Yeah, it's so and, good uh, to see you. Yes, Always uh, love to be here. Yeah, and would love to interview you in Singapore sometime. Yeah, so for sure. You. Let's do that. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.